Well, we're checking in on the Halos in the playoffs. Four specific players, three that were traded from our team this season. How are they doing and who are we rooting for? And would an outfield of Trout Ward and Renjifo be good? What would that look like? And, you know, you may not be superstitious, but you might be a little stitious. So we're going to talk about some of the things that we do that's weird and superstitious as Halo fans. You're Locked On with Mike and John, and this is Locked On Angels. You are Locked On Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And we thank you for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. You can give us a rate and a review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And if you're watching on YouTube, you can like, comment, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified every time a new episode drops. Hey, thank you for joining us for this edition of Lockdown Angels, where it's your team every day. Happy Monday to you. You've got the Frisch Brothers, a.k.a. the Super Halo Bros. My name is John, and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother John. Mike, we unfortunately are not in the playoffs this season, We're hopefully not? in 2023, <laughs> but we do have some former Halos who are in the playoffs, and that is by virtue of the fact that they were traded to playoff teams, and it's never a bad thing to trade some pieces to a playoff team. And we got some good returns. I got to say, I mean, Logan Ohapi is somebody that we're really excited about. Got him, of course, for Brandon Marsh. But we got four Halos in the playoffs, three from this year. And one's a former Halo that uh, we have some feelings about. But, you know, it is what it is. Why don't you get us started? Well, let's talk about Albert Pujols. Let's just get it out of the way, all right? <laughs> yes. Mr. 700 Home Run Club. He's now playing with the Cardinals, and he had a really great year. And, John, you pointed out something that I didn't know that was really, really frustrating. So let me mm-hmm. read his stat line, and then you can point it out to everybody, and we can all be frustrated together. He hit 270 this year, had a mm-hmm. 345 on base, a 550 slugging, and an 895 OPS. 24 home runs and 68 Ooh. RBIs. Now you can share the frustrating stat, Johnny. There was a great stat on Twitter that said that Albert's 895 OPS is his worst OPS as a Cardinal in his yep. career. However, yep. it's better than any OPS he ever had with the Angels. <laughs> and I went to baseballreference.com because I didn't believe you and I didn't believe the tweet and I looked and. It's true. Yes. <laughs> How pathetic. How pathetic. But, but you what know a what? Year. <laughs> it's it's by virtue of the fact that he's not in there every day and they're playing yeah, him for sure. very well. They're platooning him, which is also really great. And of course that DH spot really helps in the National League now. So yeah. I have a feeling if that DH spot had been around, I wonder if the Cardinals would have wanted to pay a little bit more to keep him in St. Louis at the end of sure. his first contract. So yeah, sure. just an incredible season all around. Honestly, I'm I'm happy that he got to 700. I really wanted to see that. I love that we got to be there for a lot of those milestones, 500 yeah. and 600. We got to see his career hits uh, jump up the the leaderboard there as well, yep. and and RBIs. So we got to be a lot. We got to be part of a lot of those memories with Albert Pujols, and it's unfortunate that he wasn't the same as he was in St. Louis from his first couple of years. I really just wish Mike that, you know, pride could have been set aside and he could have platooned with Jared Walsh last season. I think this whole issue could have been avoided. They, there was an interview with Perry Manassian last week, and they said that they would love to have him complete his 10 year personal services contract. Oh, wow. So we'll okay. see what happens with that. seems like from the Angels' side, they would love to have him. I think Albert just has to decide if he wants to do that. One of the guys that we traded away, and we talked a little bit about this on Friday, and we're going to talk about it again, Brandon Marsh, who Mm -hmm. was a fan favorite, lots of fun to watch. We traded him away to the Phillies. So here's his stat line with the Phillies and the rest of the games that he played there. 288, 319, 455, and a 773 OPS. With the Halos, he was 226, 284. 353 and a 637. We knew that he was struggling. He wasn't the same Marsh that he was the year before, but then he went to Philadelphia and there was all sorts of talk about like, oh, they know what's wrong with him. And yes, he improved when he got there. And now Johnny, he's in the playoffs. He's in the playoffs with the playoff team. He's playing the outfield. He's looking really good on defense. And the fact that they could fix his hitting 
is so frustrating. And it just goes yeah. to show that the angels absolutely have to make changes this off season uh, within the coaching staff, because to me, that's unacceptable. Now the consolation prize, of course, is Logan Ohapi. And I believe yes. that he will be a huge part of what the angels have to offer in the future. I mean, at the catching position, we need a strong catcher and we definitely could have Ohapi for the long haul. He could really be something special. All right, let's talk about Noah Syndergaard. Thor, he signed with us this season and was traded away. Went 5-2 and two with the Phillies and a 4-1-2 ERA. With the Halos, he was 5-8, and eight, but had a better ERA, a 3.83. Now, the 5-8 and eight record is uh, deceptive because yes, it's not on he, him. Pitched, <laughs> he pitched really well. It's kind of like, like Patrick Sandoval, right? Yeah. Like Patrick Sandoval should have had a flipped record and wins and losses don't really matter because they were pitching really, really well. So Syndergaard pitched well for us and then we traded him away, which made sense, right? Because we knew yeah. that we were going anywhere and he's a free agent. So hopefully mm-hmm. the halos can make a move and bring him back. It seems like a lot of locked on angel listeners want to see Noah back in the rotation next season for the angels. Would you want to see him back? I would want to see him back. I I think it depends on, uh, let me caveat it with this. It depends on if we can't get like a Carlos Rodon for Mm. a good deal or, or somebody else. Right. I like Syndergaard. I just don't want to break the bank for Syndergaard. And I don't know if he'll want to do another one year deal, but based upon the year that he's had 10 and 10, I think he might need to do another one-year deal. He likes it here. He brings a good attitude here. And I think on a winning team, Syndergaard would be a great influence on a young starting staff. Absolutely. Hey, let's talk about the last trade piece. It was a salary dump. You don't don't want to talk about it. (laughs) (laughs) It was a salary dump. We finally signed a long-term closing pitcher in the offseason last year, and then we traded him away at the deadline. That was Rysel. Iglesias. That was a heartbreaker because he was so good for us in 21. Remember, right. he got that bases loaded three out jam yeah, that in the That's eighth so inning. Yeah. Yeah. And then so he good. finished the game after that. But listen, he didn't have a record with the Braves since being traded over there. He's got a 0.34 ERA, Michael, Unreal. with the Braves. 26.1 innings pitched, one earned run, and 30 strikeouts. Now, one I will say, run. He obviously is working in tandem over there with Kenley Jansen because Jansen is their closer. So maybe there's something to that. Maybe there's something to being the setup man and maybe not having to save every game like he was with us, but he was not the same in 2022 for the halos. He went two and six had a 4.04 ERA in 35 and two thirds innings. And he had 48 strikeouts. So he has just been phenomenal for the Braves. Honestly, if the Braves run it back this season, I'd be happy about that. And I think it'd be really cool to see Rysel be part of that winning team. I'm also excited to see the Phillies go far with Syndergaard and Marsh as well. I am rooting for Marsh. I want to see Marsh get deep into the playoffs. I want to see that guy with a big smile on his face. I really mm-hmm. like him. I hope he does well. And so I'm rooting for the Phillies. And and why not root for Philadelphia? Because that's near where Mike Trout is from. And so I'm sure Trout's rooting for them as well so it'd be great to see them go deep into the playoffs i like rysel and and the braves are a fun team to watch and it's great that they can actually not re-sign freddie freeman and then get matt olsen who puts up just banger numbers Mm -hmm. and so it'd be interesting to see what the braves and the phillies do and i've always been a cards fan but i I don't know maybe i just need to like repent but i I, i'd like to see uh, albert pujols get knocked out sooner rather than later (laughs) All right, let me let me put it to you this way about Brandon Marsh. Do you want to see him get a World Series ring before Mike Trout? I do. I I, I would oh, rather okay. obviously have have us get it, but I'd love to see him win. He's just the guy that you want to root for, and he works so hard with us. He he was always a hundred percent, and so I think that anybody out of those four guys that deserves a World Series ring, it's Brandon Marsh. Love that. Coming up on Locked On Angels, what would an outfield of Ward, Trout, and Ranjifo look like? Should it be a thing? We're going to talk about that. But first, Locked on Angels is brought to you by Built Bar. Have you tried the new Built Puff, the cookie dough chunk puff? It's light and chewy and it has real cookie dough chunks. I've been using it as a supplement for lunch if I'm working through lunch and it has been perfect. It's covered in 100% real chocolate. All the joys of eating cookie dough without the hassle 
of making it. Plus it's healthy for you. The cookie dough chunk puff is only 160 calories and it has a whopping 15 grams of protein. So it will fill you up. Go to built.com to snag your box right now for you and maybe one for the family. It's a perfect treat. Or if you can find a really good hiding place, you can hoard them all to yourself. All built bars and puffs are made with collagen protein, which your body absorbs more efficiently and provides a ton of health benefits. So eat something that tastes really good and is really good for you. You're going to love the new cookie dough chunk puff. Again, whether you need a snack for a workout or a late night treat, or you just need to grab a quick bite, built is the perfect protein bar for you. They taste better than any candy bar. You can Ditch the calories, Johnny. You can ditch the fat, ditch the sugar, and bring into the goodness of Built Bar. Bring that into your your tummy. So grab a Built Bar or a Built Puff right now at Built.com. Use our promo code LOCKEDON15 and get 15% off your order. Use the promo code LOCKEDON15. Go to Built.com today. We want to thank you for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. Mike, we had not one, but two questions that yes. dealt with the same issue. The first one came from James Barton on Instagram, and he brought this up, and I thought, this is really intriguing. Let's talk about it on the show. He said, Renifo played in the outfield the other day after Trout took that foul ball off his foot. What do you think about flirting with the idea of moving Renifo to left field next season? Hmm. Allows us to keep his great bat in the lineup. Then they have the opportunity to go out and sign somebody like a Swanson or Trey Turner or Fletch at second or keep up Levon Soto. And then not only did James send that message, but then we got this voicemail. Hi, Mike and John. This is Ken calling from Tokyo, formerly from SoCal and a longtime Angels fan. I just wanted to let you know you have at least one loyal listener here on the other side of the world. You guys have just been awesome in keeping it fun through another frustrating season. But now looking ahead to next year, I'm actually getting pretty excited, and I wanted to know what you think of this idea. Putting Renjifo in the outfield, specifically left field. He's quick, he's got a great arm, and he's shown he can play the outfield, and he's earned his way into the lineup this year. But if Walsh and Rendon come back healthy and Fletch can stay off the IL, we've got a great infield regardless of who plays it short. So putting Renjifo in the outfield might be a way we keep his bat in the lineup. And if one of the infielders do get hurt or need a rest day, he can fill in and be a super utility guy, kind of like Kike Hernandez and Chris Taylor for the Dodgers a few years back. And they were so valuable to those teams. So those are my two cents. Uh, I'd love to know what you think. And keep up the great work, guys. Bye. Ken, all the way from Tokyo, thank you for being a loyal Locked On Angels listener all the way in Japan, my friend. Mike, is there something in the water? Because everybody's got this idea about Renhifo all of a sudden. And I yeah. got to say, I kind of I kind of like it. But what are your thoughts? Yeah, okay, two thoughts. One, I'm glad that we were fun in a frustrating season, but I want to be fun during a fun season. So that's what we're <laughs> and a winning season. Next year, right? <laughs> and then when it comes to Renhifo, you know he had 15 errors playing short and third and second mm -hmm. base. And so... Mm -hmm. I think that there's something there. Now, I'm not going to yep. say, yes, let's make that move. But I think that there's something there. And they're right. It it allows us some flexibility if we wanted to go sign a shortstop or if we wanted to move some pieces around. It allows Soto, if they really are high on him, to be at short. I do think that it does hurt our depth a bit. Hmm. But if Renjifo is going to come in and play the infield for a bit and then play the outfield, that's great if he can handle himself. I just don't want us to get into a situation where we find Renjifo looking a lot like Joe Adele out there. He's mm. a bit lost. He's a bit confused, right? I want to make sure that this guy is confident because his offensive numbers are, are desperately needed in this lineup. And yeah. I think that he's earned the right to be somebody that they consider on an everyday basis. And if moving him to left field is a wise decision, I'm not against it. What do you think? I would love a situation where Soto, Fletcher, and Renjifo can all be in the lineup at the same time. Now, yeah. having said that, we desperately need a left fielder. And yeah. so if that means that Fletch and Renjifo take up the middle so that we can have another left fielder, I like that. I'm still really into the idea of Jock Peterson on a short-term deal. But if Renjifo can play left field, and that means Soto and Fletcher are going to play shortstop and second – I kind of like that, but it also 
begs the question, you still need a middle infielder. And then, like James said, perhaps it gives us the opportunity to get Swanson or Trey Turner. But yeah, now that now that the offseason is here, I know you and I were high on that idea earlier this season. I don't think it's going to happen. I don't okay. see it happening. I don't see them going after yeah. some like I, by all accounts, I think the Phil Nevin situation with him coming back on a one year deal is good. I think because that's consistency, but Mike, I think it's a reflection on how this off season is going to go in the sense that yeah. it's a get me over off season. So that might mean they make some adjustments and move Renhefo to left field and then have somebody be a backup to Soto and Fletcher. But if it's all three of them up the middle in the infield, I like that too. And there's some kind of rotation of those three and a new left fielder that they can get on a good deal. I'm really afraid of what this offseason is going to look like for our Halos. But yeah. I, I also like the comparison to a Chris Taylor or Kike Hernandez type for Luis Renjifo being that super utility guy. Those those are my thoughts. Yeah, I, I saw an interview that Jeff Fletcher did with Perry and he said, Perry, that this is going to be an off season where it's business as usual. Now, <laughs> Perry, Perry has been that guy, right? He's been that guy to give kind of the company line and then behind the scenes is working the best that he can. I think business as usual will mean that they're going to try to improve this team, but I don't think that they're going to give out really big contracts. I have yeah. a friend who's a Dodger fan who is listening to the show and he's texted me a few times. Every time we've talked about Trey, he's like, he's not going anywhere. He's signing mm. with the Dodgers. They've got mm -hmm. the money. And then, on Twitter just last week, uh, pay the man was, was trending and it had to do with Dansby Swanson because mm. he is playing so well with the Braves. So I can see the angels going and grabbing somebody, maybe like a Brandon Drury. I like that. And, and allowing him to come in. And here's why I think I really like that. John, you mentioned Chris Taylor. It's the Chris Taylors that help teams get deep into the playoffs. Yeah. It's not always the big money guy. And sure. We found that out, haven't we? And so I think that it actually would be wise to get some of those guys that we can mix and match. Think of what the Tampa Bay Rays were like when they were going to the World Series back in like 08, right? Mm -hmm. and, and think about some of the teams that the Dodgers have had over the last few years, well, even I the think, Braves, right? I think it was Kike in the 2017 playoffs was all over the place. He had a yes. couple of monster yeah. games, man, when he was yeah. with the Dodgers. I hope that's the right year, but I know it was one playoff run where he was insane and it's not somebody that you count on to be that big bat, but man, he came through in those, in those playoff games. Yeah. And so I, I, I think that it actually might be a really wise decision to see what we got and then maybe mix and match with some pieces. And, and that's the ebb and flow of being an angel fan. We're like, Hey, we got to spend some money. We got to do this. We got to go and get it. But I think we got to spend our money wisely because we're not sure about the, the ownership. And I think that we need to get the pieces that are good for Phil Nevin and get the pieces that are good for this lineup, that are good for this team. We need guys that are going to make contact. We need David Fletcher-esque type of guys, Levon Soto-esque type of guys. Mm -hmm. We don't need a lot of guys who are going to swing for the fences because we have that in Shohei and in Trout and with Rendon coming back, Walsh coming back. And that's the other factor here, Johnny, is remember – with Walsh coming back, I think that that's going to give us some solid defense, obviously. But I think he's actually, since he's going to be healthy, will be a great offensive piece in this lineup as well. Hey, we had another great voicemail come in from George. And so I want to play this one for you and get your thoughts on it, Mike. Okay. Hey, guys. This is uh, George from Ojai, California. Um, I love the show, first of all. Thank you guys very much. I listen to it every single day. I have one concern. I feel like my girlfriend might be the downfall to the Angels ever since I started dating her, which was about 2015. Uh, I know, I know. Um, every time I take her to a game, we lose. I'm not sure why, and I'm wondering if anyone else that's listening has that same problem. Well, anyways, thank you guys. I love the show. Good job. <laughs> George, <laughs> that, that's fantastic. That Mike. is great. Yeah. George from Ojai, bringing his girlfriend. Every time they go, they lose. <laughs> <laughs> Well, George, two things. Uh, if you like her, then you should have put a ring on it. And and so you might need to do that. Uh, That's what's going to break the curse. That's what's going to break <laughs> it if, if they get engaged. That'll that'll start, that'll start lead to some wins, right? Yeah, there you go. 
Um, it, that's an interesting thought. Now, George isn't isn't too odd, Johnny, because I know for me there are things that I'll notice that I'm doing. Yes, that maybe. It, it it probably has no connection because I'm not superstitious, but I am a little stitious, right? And yes. so there's probably no connection to what's happening, but I, I will find myself and my family laughs at me. I'll find myself standing up during a rally and not <laughs> wanting to move, right? Yeah. And 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 I'll find myself like I, I, I can't I can't check the score because if I check right. the score, then it's going to ruin things. I mentioned on this show just last week how uh, Suarez was pitching a no hitter, right? And then I went, oh, I, I should turn the game on because I was doing oh, a something perfect else. Game. We <laughs> it was a perfect game. And so I turned it on and immediately came a single and then immediately yes. came the home run. And I was like, it's my fault. I did this. So, <laughs> and then when I'm at the game, Johnny, I, I, won't, I won't talk during yeah. the Angels uh, plate appearances, which is why you and I are great and our families are great at the games because – we, we don't talk. Yes, there it is. If you're if you're not watching on YouTube, you're listening. John's leaning forward. We have our fingers right underneath our nose like we're praying. We probably are praying and we're just watching. And then every once in a while, it's, wow, that was, that was a fast pitch. Wow, that's did you good. see that slide? Oh, did you hear, did you hear that? Like that's, that's constantly yeah. our conversation, right? And so those are some of the, maybe the ticks that I have, yes. some of the superstitions that I have. What are some things that you do? Well, you know what? Ever since I became really active on Twitter because of Super Halo Bros and Locked On Angels, if anything good is happening, like a perfect game or a no hitter, I don't tweet because I feel like <laughs> if I do, that's when it's going to go away. Unless yeah. I've been tweeting from the very beginning and I've been consistent through it. If yes. I haven't tweeted once and, and my first tweet is going to happen during a perfect game or a no hitter, then I'm not going to do it. Now, Last year, when Patrick Sandoval took that no-hitter into the ninth against the Twins, my wife and I were out to dinner, and I was keeping up on the phone saying, oh, hey, look at this. He's throwing a no-hitter. You want to know yeah. what my mistake was? When I got what? home, I turned on the game. That was my fault. I apologize, Angel <laughs> fans. I apologize, Patrick Sandoval. I turned yep. on the game. I should have just left it. I should have let the game finish out itself. The same thing happened when Shohei made his debut in 2018. It was a Sunday, and the reason why I know that is because I believe I was watching WrestleMania or some sort of <laughs> WWE show, and yeah. I saw what uh, what Shohei was doing against the A's. It was like a perfect game through six or something like that. And I, I paused my wrestling show, and I flipped over to the game, and sure enough, as soon as I tuned in, that's when he gave up the perfect game. And so there's a couple of instances where it's my fault. Now, I will say this. I was 2-0. and at games this season. I didn't get to a lot of games, but I was 2 and 0 going to games in person. And last year I had a pretty good record. I think I was 4 and 2 or 5 and yeah. 2, maybe even 6 and 2 at some good. point. So yeah. I had a good record going. So that's another thing that I believe in is is in-person records. So George, here's my opinion. You guys need to stay away from Angel Games, especially your girlfriend. <laughs> but I think you can break the curse, my friend. I think if you put a ring on it, and uh, and and lock that down. Yeah. Then I think that you can uh, change your fortunes with the angels. I think that's going to break the curse. And George, I'm a pastor in real life, so we've got it all worked <laughs> out, bro. <laughs> you can marry them. You can do the ceremony. <laughs> Well, thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen today. Now make your second listen to Locked On MLB podcast with MLB expert Paul Francis Sullivan. He brings humor, passion, and a unique perspective on every team and shares some of the biggest stories from around the league, especially right now as the playoffs are underway. You can follow the number one daily legal-wide podcast, Locked On MLB, on the Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, be sure to give us a follow at Locked On Angels on Twitter and at Super Halo Bros on Twitter and Instagram. Share your superstitions with us. We'd yes. love to hear from you and the things that you do or don't do while watching the game. And Mike, what do we have on deck for tomorrow's show? Well, the Angels' attendance was below 3 million for mm. the first time since 2002. Mm -hmm. What happened? We'll yeah. tell you tomorrow on Locked On Angels. It's going to be a good conversation that we hope that you tune into. Until then, my name is John, and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother John. That's going to do it for this edition of Locked On Angels, and we will see you tomorrow.